All right, we talked about it a lot already, but can someone tell me what holiday just passed? This, yeah, whoever said Thanksgiving. You're smart. Forget about Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving's over. We're not talking about that. But now we can talk about how it's time to start decorating for Christmas. So, like, you might go get a Christmas tree next week, next week after that. Um, maybe, like, put lights outside your house. Um, listen to Christmas music. I know Brittany told me she's already starting to listen to Christmas music. Um, and if you're like me, you didn't even wait for Thanksgiving to end before you started doing all this. I've been wearing Christmas socks for the past two weeks. Um, and while it can be really exciting and easy to get caught up in all the fun of preparing for Christmas, um, I think it's really important that we focus on preparing our hearts. So if you went to Mass today, then you probably already know that today is the first Sunday of Advent. And the word Advent comes from the Latin word for arrival. And we know that this is a time to prepare for the arrival of Jesus. So during Advent, we have the tradition of lighting the candles of the Advent wreath. And just in case anyone doesn't know, I think most of us do, but the typical Advent wreath has three purple candles and one pink one, and it's in the shape of a circle um, to signify everlasting life, because circles don't end. Um, and if you were at 6 p.m. Mass, then you probably saw Father Luis light the first candle on the Advent wreath. So does anyone know what that first candle is called, or what it represents? Any guesses? Hope? Yes, so the first candle in the Advent wreath is called the Candle of Hope. And so in this first week, this candle serves as a reminder to us about how the Israelites were hoping for a Messiah all throughout the Old Testament to come and save them from their enemies and ultimately their sin. And so I think we need to take a look just a little bit closer into what hope really is. So when you think of hope in your day-to-day -day life, I think we often confuse it for wishful thinking. So let me give you an example. Let's say you took a test, and you studied really hard for this test, and after you took it, you were like, wow, that was a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. But you say, I hope I got an A on that. And, but once that test is done, it's completely out of your control. And you could get an A, you could do really well, even if you want to, but it still might not happen. And so that's wishful thinking because there's still that doubt that what you want to happen will happen. But hope in a biblical sense is different. It's more of an intense expectation. There's no doubt when it comes to hope. So when we hope that God's gonna do something, we know that he's gonna do it. And Another way to look at this is taking your trust and placing it in a trustworthy God. Because there's never been a time where God said he was going to do something and didn't do it. He always does as he promises, or in some cases he does even more, even better. And so when God claims that he's gonna send his son to us again in the second coming, we can have hope. We know that this is gonna happen and it gives us a peace of mind because we don't have to sit there and wonder is Jesus really going to come again? Because we have hope. We know that he's going to come again. There's no uncertainty. Even though we don't know when it will happen, we know it'll happen. So I think it's really important that we have this understanding of hope because oftentimes it can be difficult to see the bright side or the light when we're struggling with something or when we're going through rough times. And so when we use wishful thinking, it leaves this uncertainty about, I don't, I don't think I can get through this. This is too hard. I'm not strong enough to get through this. But when we look at it with hope, we know that God said he will come save us. He will come get you through this. And so you, you know it's a, it's a peace of mind, and you, you know that he will lead you through what you're going through. And so my goal for this Advent season is to have you look at areas of your life where you're fighting a battle. And instead of going in there with doubt and, and not knowing if 
you can come out of it. I want you to go in there with hope, and I want you to say your, to yourself, I know that God would lead me through this. And I want you to have hope. Thank you.